and you're here on Extra Time TV. Hey everyone, welcome to a special edition of Extra Time TV. This is Andres Oklal and joining us on the show today, Keston Julian, all the way from Europe. We have some special news. For those of you who don't know and you should know, Keston Julian and his team have made history by qualifying uh, for the UEFA Champions League in Group D, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but before we get into that, Keston and his club have made history. Keston is from Trinidad and Tobago. He plays uh, left back for us, although, um, you know, He's capable of playing pretty much anywhere on the left side from what I've seen. But today, we're going to speak to Keston. Keston, how are you today? I'm good. Um, as I said, not too long finished cleaning. Um, I had a training session today. Well, actually, it's about training this week, you know, because I had a hamstring injury. Um, it set me back about 12 to two weeks, 12 days to two weeks. Um, but yeah, hopefully, I could get ready this week. And, get ready for upcoming games that we have ahead. Yes, yes. So, you know, obviously in the UEFA Champions League, uh, the group that you're in, let's talk about that. Group D with uh, Inter Milan, or Inter Milano as they're called now, which is, everybody knows that's my favorite team. Uh, Real Madrid, who I would say is your team. <laughs> uh, Shakhtar Donetsk, and you know, that, that, that is quite a difficult group anyway. But, you know, for those of you who have been following me throughout my entire media career, you know, we have been interviewing Keston since all the way back in high school. And Keston, you spoke about the fact that you're a huge admirer of Marcelo from Real Madrid. What is your... I can't even imagine what you're thinking. I'm excited for you, so I can imagine how you're feeling. Um, it's like from, you know, sitting, uh, you know, in Gasparillo, which is where we're from, you know, talking about your stars and now possibly playing against these guys. Yeah, it was a really good feeling. Um, I was a little bit shocked when I was really good Real Madrid in our group, you know, from, from as I say, from watching Real Madrid and Marcelo and playing on TV, to now going and play against them in a, not even a friendly match in a Champions League uh, group stage match, uh, which can be something big for me in my career, you know. Um, um, I look up to Marcelo a lot. I mean, I don't know if he will start against me, um, Sheriff, but, you know, just to be on the pitch against Real Madrid, even if I'm on the bench or starting, you know, is a, is a big achievement for me. Yes, yes. And, you know, uh, just to highlight, you know, the human perspective, folks, you know, Keston, you know, we, you and I know what it's like. Every footballer knows what it's like. You sit down and you talk about the Champions League with your friends. Uh, both of us are from the same area in Gasparolo, Trinidad and Tobago, which is in the Caribbean, folks. And, you know, talking about this. And sometimes, you know, when you're an aspiring footballer or trying to pursue anything in life, it seems like this dream, like far away, it could never happen. And sometimes it feels like that. Um, you know, Keston, all those kids who are looking up to you now, and being like, okay, wow, Keston Julian is now going to play in UEFA Champions League. And they're looking at this video right now. Um, what advice would you give to them? I would say, um, I mean, I was in the best, uh, the best football I was growing up. Um, it had a lot of guys better than me. I mean, I just take it serious, you know, because I know I, I, I'm, not, I'm not good at it, but if I, if, I, if I train well and if I focus, you know, I could be a good footballer. Um, and I just never give up, you know, I just keep doing what I do, um, what the coaches say to do, do extra work, you know. Even if you have a bad game, do study it. Everybody's have a bad game, even Messi, Ronaldo, they have a bad game. So I know some players maybe have bad games and study it and think uh, and I'm a career telling thing, but yeah, just never give up on, you know. You know, the sky is the limit and whatever I do, just give it 120% all the time, every game. And I think you, you will reach the top once he's a, a good footballer. Yep, and you know, that's key words, folks, you know, like uh, basically it sounds like you've heard it before, but working hard and never giving up. I know it sounds cliche, but you're seeing for yourself one of our own in the Champions League in a time where we have lots of problems with Trinidad Tobago football. And these are one of the, the, the great positive things that we could speak about, which I think a lot of people should be celebrating the fact because we know how difficult things are in the region and in Trinidad Tobago football. So this is very good. And also, you know, we, we know you've had to deal with some of your injuries and so on. So it's good to see that you, you're bouncing back from that. 
So, you know, the Champions League is about to probably kick off pretty soon. I know it probably feels like tomorrow for some of us who are looking forward to it now. It's no big secret, as I mentioned, that I'm an Inter Milan fan. So now I'll be torn because when you guys play, <laughs> when Sheriff plays Inter, it's going to be difficult for me to watch. But um, I'll obviously be supporting Keston. So Keston, you know, this is new territory for you. So how would you, you know, explain your, your feeling right now? Um, well, yeah, yeah, adrenaline high, you know, we've been up there against these big teams, as I say, in a friendly game in our official Champions League with this match, which, you know, you'll be nervous. I mean, uh, everyone is nervous. I think even even big players is getting nervous when they're going to play against big teams, you know. But yeah, everyone, uh, for me, I'm excited to, to play against these teams and show what I can do. You know, I'm um, a young left back from Trinidad, you know, I mean, they don't see as much. So I just go in and show that we know what Trinidad and Caribbean players could do, you know. Yes, yes. And um, it's very difficult and very few Trinidad Tobago players have played at this level. And I'll put a challenge out to the fans out there to let us know there are only a handful of Trinidad Tobago players that have played in the ultimate competition in Europe, which I will not give you the answers. Some are very obvious. I know there are football fans who are looking at this video who are already like, what is Andre talking about? But, you know... What we'll do is, whoever gets, you know, at least maybe five correct, um, we'll give them a complimentary jersey courtesy our sponsors, which is my store. So, Keston, you know, we'll put that challenge to them uh, in addition to you, because you are now one of those people in that very rare list, which is an achievement that is very... N nobody can take that away from you. That is a very unique thing. And, you know, uh, somebody who is from your area, you know, that is, you know, we're super proud. And I'm pretty sure the guys in Gasparolo and Caratal and everywhere in Trinidad and Tobago will be... We need to put up a little sign. Keston Julian is one of us. That's the kind of stuff we need to do. In fact, I'll make sure I'll make it happen, Keston. I'll talk to Mr. James and those guys. <laughs> so, listen. Uh, this, as I said before, is, is, is new territory for you. And... The, the Champions League. I know there's no guarantee who will start, who will play. That's that's just a life of a professional footballer. But your, your your mental approach, as you know, I'm building on what we asked about it before. You know, you have the national team, the UEFA Champions League. Um, what do you think this could do for you personally, playing at such a high level, moving forward in your career? Well. <sighs> Yeah, playing Champions as a League. Um, yeah. yeah, as a player, I mean, every player want to evolve, even with the play anyway. They want to be. I was made that, that step in the career, you know. And I think um, at that age right now, that you know, I think if I do good, even in the Champions League, if I do good in the season, you know, especially in the Champions League, um, I think I can make a, a step in my career at the age I'm now, 22 years. We're going until 23 next month. Um, um, I could say at the peak where I can make a good transfer, you know, and that is my actually goal for, for this year, this season, you know, to to do well. And um, I know people will say, um, like, that they say, it's not good to say that you're looking to make a transfer and your fans will like you. I mean, fans already know players just come here to, to do good to make a transfer to, to have a better a better um, future. I mean, Sheriff is a good club. I mean, a great club. Everyone could see. Um, as I tell everyone, we have 18 training pitch. We have two club hotels. We have uh, um, an indoor pitch for winter time. We don't train in the winter. We're well, outside. We just train inside. Um, yeah, it's a real professional club. But mainly, my goal is to reach as far as I could go. Um, that, that is my main goal this this, this season to, to, to play in Champions League as much games as possible and for scouts to see me, clubs to see me, you know, so so I can showcase my talent. Yep, yep, you, you read my mind with the next question because just like yourself, this is, is history uh, for your club, you know, getting into the stage of the Champions League. Um, and you guys got past some tough teams. I'm just going to pull it up real quick. Um, I'm trying to pull it up real fast here, yeah. but this not just for you but for the club so you know tell us tell us about this club a little bit i mean you kind of beat me to the question a little bit by explaining the club but you know how essential has fc sheriff been in your development so far 
Um, well, they play a, a part in my development, you know. Um, uh, first of all, playing Champions League qualifiers to be playing in the group stage. I mean, the club is, as I say, really professional. Um, good coaches, good um, training facilities. You know, you feel you feel like a professional. You know. Um, but yeah, they played uh, and this year at home or last month, make it a year since I'm here. And yeah, they, uh, they played a, a major role in this one year that I'm here. So yes, you know, uh, I'm just looking at the pathway here. So you guys reach a group stage after eliminating teams like Red Star and Dynamo, Zagreb. These are, these are tough teams. These are not easy teams to play against. And yeah, especially, you know, yeah. uh, especially playing at their home, it's, it's not easy. Yes, yeah, so, so tell us about that. I mean, in Trinidad and Tobago and in the Caribbean and general fans, you know, we talk about the big teams, which you'll now be facing the Real Madrid and the Inter Milan's. But a lot of people, except for the football nuts like myself, know that these teams have massive fan bases and very intimidating home stadiums. So tell us about that. Yeah, especially when we play in Zag, you know, in Red Star in Belgrade. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they was the most most ferocious stadium that I ever played in since I played in football. Um, yeah, the fans was really really crazy. When you come out, as soon as you enter the pitch to to, to warm up, the boy in your family warm up till you. Till you go inside, when you come out, the boo in you, when you had the ball, they're just screaming, you know. When you had the ball, they're screaming, so But also, they're shocking you know, at the same time, you know, but you had to stay focused mentally. But yeah, I, I didn't get a chance to play in, um, in, Zag in Zagreb. But they didn't have that much much fans, you know. I think I had like one section, but like 10, 10 12,000, because they didn't know we the, 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 the lost the, the lost trainers, so you know, it's difficult to, to come back from that. But they also had some ultras on the other side that actually make noise. But I think if they play at home first, we, they, they would have come out with all the fans and could have been under some pressure. But yeah, we, we hold them to a 0 0 draw, which was, was good. Um, our keeper did really, really good that game. Otherwise, we could have ended up in some problems. Mm -hmm. But yeah, these teams is <coughs> these teams is very, very, very hard teams to, to pass in, in these group stage and these um qualifications. Yes, yes, and you know, oftentimes, you know, we focus on the not on the qualification stages, but just from the group stages moving forward, and the. the the difficulty playing in away stadiums. Um, I, think I think it's good for Toronto Tobago, young players and players in general, even some senior players. Because, you know, before the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, the stadiums, our stadiums are not as intimidating. I mean, you know this. Um, it's, it's very, it, in a lot of ways, we are probably one of the most friendly away stadiums in the world. <laughs> you know, Trinidad has the chillest people ever. So from playing from, you know, from high school football, then the pro league, then even some national games to this environment. How much of a change that was for you? I would say uh, a big, a big change because any pro league it doesn't have much fans, you know. And when I play national team and if I play a home game um, with a full team, I always say my one of my goals is to play in front of Trinidad with a, a full stadium, you know. Um, but um, it never get to happen. Um, I play against Venezuela, China. It was not an intimidating stadium. But when you come to Europe and you go to these places like Croatia, Greece, Serbia, they they have crazy, crazy, crazy fans, crazy, crazy fans. Yep. And the mental preparation, you know, as you said, I mean, even at a recreational level, when you have fans, you know, harassing you on the sidelines, so you could see even in those little tournaments. <laughs> That, you know, like even in Gasparilla, where we're from, you could see, you know, the heckling and things like that get to some players. And, you know, and even at the pro level, psychologically, you have to train yourself to prepare for that. And, you know, as you said, you know, they're booing you at every ball. It's loud. And, you know, that's not even the full stadium because of the COVID-19 restrictions, because they already lost the first leg in some in that particular game you spoke about. So, you know, in terms of training yourself to prepare for that, because with each... Uh, step in progression in your career it gets more and more intense but you seem your demeanor has always been you know a kind of calm one has that ever been an issue for you 
not 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 really because any day sometimes when I go to these countries they're not speaking your language and they're screaming at you but they don't understand what they're saying so that <laughs> don't really get to me sometimes you know right but before like when I was younger and I know when I was playing connection senior team around 17 and you hear people talking shit, they used to get to me but any day I'll be like yeah I out here on the picture and them update them they're just talking you know? so that's just fly past me but out here I don't really study that much on the booing and the, and the cursing and thing I don't really it don't, it don't really matter to me Good, good, because, you know, um, that's a whole other topic maybe we could talk about another time, you know, about, um, you know, for example, the national team had to face some racism at the Gold Cup. Uh, not the first time. It's not, it's hardly anything new in football, which is bad. And, you know, to have that mental toughness, because I spoke to, you know, several players who played at the highest level, like his Slop and Roger, and, you know, they all eventually, at least the guys I spoke to, learned or spoke to me and said that you, you have to block it out. And I, I realized most of the really successful players, while it's awful and unacceptable, some of the things people say, and there should be punishments for it, which that's a whole other topic. You know, it's good to see that, you know, you have that control and, uh, you know, this, you know, enough about the, you know, the, the negatives of football. We're going back to the, uh, you know, the Champions League now. So, you know, we spoke on the fact that, you know, that Marcelo is one of the heroes and the fact that you'll be on the same pitch with him um the the, the 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 approach to the crowds there based on you know what you play faced in red star will obviously be very different because it's the champions league now the, the world will be watching you know Trinidad Tobago is going to be watching um how is that for not just yourself but for like your family and so on what is your family saying about this oh uh, well, uh, i mean my mother don't watch football, but she always watch when I play. And, um, so yeah, they're, they're really proud, they're really proud of me. Um, I mean, she even remember, she messaged me when we qualified. But when she see the group stage and she was like, she can't believe that, you know, cause I put as Marcelo in my room and thing. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, you're gonna play against Marcelo now. So she know, you know, so yeah, she really proud. And everyone, my friends, everyone just, just, just really proud. Cause they know that, yeah, I always from since, since I play left back, I always watch Marcelo, you know, so everyone know that it is, it is a big thing for me. And imagine, and the good thing is, you know, as, and folks, if you don't know, even my dad knew Keston Julian because he, he taught him at the, uh, at, at Gaspro government where both of us went to school, although me, that was a long time after, <laughs> well, long time before, sorry, but, uh, you know, the, the humility that you have with the success because oftentimes it goes to players' heads. You know, I work at some of the franchises and crickets and, and, and football and so on and it's very good to see that you have that because, you know, now, just like you were looking up to Marcelo, now there'll be some little kids sitting down and being like, hey, I want to be like Keston and that, that brings a new set of responsibility with it. Um, so what do you think about this new responsibility that now people are now looking at you, Keston? as how you looked at Marcelo? I mean, yeah, yeah, it's a responsibility to not let whoever looking up to me down, you know, I mean, it's football, anything can happen, but yeah, as I say, um, if, it look, if I don't know whoever watching, whoever looking up to me, um, I know I just do my best, um, hoping to reach like Marcelo them one day, you know, um, have children with pictures and wall with me and whatever. That my goal. I mean, I'm from Trinidad. People they say Caribbean players can reach that level. And thing. I mean, I mean, now I play in Champions League, so anything is possible, you know. Yes. So I think, yeah, I mean, I have a responsibility, and uh, I don't tend, I don't tend to let, let anybody down. Yes, yes. Um, and like you, like yeah, like uh, Levi Garcia as well. You know, have that really humble demeanor, which is very good. It makes Trinidad Tobago look. Good, you know, because you all know ambassadors for the country now, whether you know it or not. You know, uh, Levi is a very humble guy, well liked yourself, and that is a very because not as you you know some footballers, which you know it's okay. People have different personalities, but you know the the, the humility is, is is something that people will like, um, and you know the fact that you know that there's a lot to learn. You're still very young, and you know it's it's you have people like me who will be following every single thing that you do. And make sure if people are not listening that they do listen. And now I think now that your achievement does that for you. I mean in the Champions League. So you know, um I know this 
there's a lot of process sometimes and um, you know we're, we're gonna shift a little bit off from uh, the, you know club football to you know the national team obviously you know we didn't make it to the world cup this time around uh you know we had a decent showing at the gold cup with all the problems you know we've had behind the scenes so you know the next target is obviously the next gold cup you know uh in the the concacaf nations league and then obviously the next world cup after this one uh what are your aspirations for for yourself for the national team I mean, I mean, I, I, I always like to get a, a call to the national team. I think we have a new coach now. Um, I'm, I never played, I never, he never trained me, but I played against him, you know. And to be honest, I like his style of football, his style of coaching, you know, my, my type of coach. Um, hopefully he like me and give him a call, you know, I mean, it will be good. Mm. Um, but yeah, my goals are just, you know, hopefully one day to play a World Cup. I think we have a good chance to qualify for the 2026 because it, it played in our region, yeah. which which gave us a, a great opportunity. And I think, as I say, if we get more players to play in Europe, you know, professional leagues, you know, by that time, you know, we could have a chance uh, to qualify for the World Cup. I mean, it didn't really think I just focus on my goals, you know, to, to my club goals and whatever. But yeah, my goals the national team is just uh, to get call up every time the window come around and, you know, to, to, to play and to represent my country. You know, how everyone wants to represent the country at the highest level. And um, yeah, just just show the fans what, what, what I can do. So, Keston, we really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us about this amazing achievement you've done for yourself, for your country, and your club. Uh, you know, in Trinidad and Tobago, everybody is huge. They are huge Champions League fans. And, uh, you know, the conversation is going to take place. Oh, by the way, you know, Real Madrid is playing Inter Milan. And Keston Julian, <laughs> our guy from Trinidad and Tobago, is going to be there. So, folks, you know, I know you all have a lot of questions for Keston. Keston. So you could put in the comment section below. Also, this will be on Facebook Live, YouTube Live. So it will be live comments. You will respond and we'll have people respond immediately. And uh, for those of you, just to remind you, I would like you all to submit in the comment section below the, the Trinidadians who have played in the Champions League. This is all of them. And we'll take a draw from whoever gets it right. And they will get a jersey of their choice courtesy the folks that are sponsoring our show, which is my store. So... That's a good challenge for them, Keston. So, Keston, we really appreciate you taking time out to really answer these questions because it's very important, you know, for the young ones out there, for the country, to celebrate positive things. And, you know, it's it's really a great achievement. So, it's really, it's really been a pleasure. Yeah, no problem. No problem. All right. So, folks, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment in the comment section below. Keston will definitely, definitely be ex uh, uh, excited. And I'm pretty sure we will be excited. So we'll keep track of what you're doing, Keston. Um, everybody's proud. And we'll do make sure to harass you every time you make some progress. We'll be right behind you to document it, to make sure as much people see it as possible, Keston. So congratulations on this achievement. Good luck in the upcoming Champions League and in your career in general. And once again, thank you for joining us. Just a reminder everyone, for more episodes with Shaka His Luck, be sure to head over to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more updates, interviews and content.